So in this video, I'm going over NetPlan. Ubuntu released this in 18 and has continued on with it. So I thought I need to cover this just so you understand how to change from like a DHCP to a static IP in your Ubuntu instance. It's very important. And actually after using it for a little bit, I think I'm gonna grow to like it. Uh, however, anything new, when we're so used to doing a static IP a certain way, a whole new method comes out and we're like, why? But with all that said, I actually think it's a well-designed thing and it's not really replace any of the legacy systems. It just kind of puts it all in one spot for us to do all our configuration. So I think once we learn the syntax, it'll be good. And that's really what this video is about. Just covering over the basics of a DHCP to static IP in that plan. Okay, so NetPlan is started in Ubuntu 18 and kind of carries on from there. Now, NetPlan does not replace Network Manager or System D. Um, just know that it does interface with it. So it kind of makes it all in one place to change a YAML file, which if you look at the listing here, you'll see that this is the default YAML file that's loaded up on Ubuntu server. This allows you to change pretty much whatever you want. You want to do bonding, you want to set up your Wi-Fi, you want to go ahead and set up a static instead of a DHCP address. You do it all from this one YAML file. It's generated and applied whenever you change your address. So it's kind of a nice system once you get used to it. However, it is a big change from what we're used to. So of course we all hate this. But at the same time, we need to know it it's there and it can be nice once you learn it. Um, but I always find myself going back to the syntax because I'm still getting it wrong. So with all that said, let's go ahead and go into this YAML file. But before we make any changes, I always make a copy of the YAML file, just a, a dot back at the end here. Uh, this just is in case I screw something up or I delete too much stuff or I don't put a space in or whatever it might be. I have that backup to where I can just restore it to this configuration. So with that back up in place, let's change some stuff. Okay, so first it breaks down your network into bonds, ethernet, or Wi-Fi's. <laughs> it just depends on what you got. So if you have Wi-Fi, it won't say ethernet, it'll say Wi-Fi. If you have ethernet, it'll say ethernet. Um, and if you're doing bonding or anything else, it'll actually put it in its own separate category. So network, whatever the type it is, ethernets, Wi-Fi, bonds, whatever it might be and then the actual interface name. And you notice that they're all indented as we're going into this. And then we can say addresses and DHCP true. So we want to set a static IP. So what we're gonna do is just change this to false. Now for this, um, let's go ahead and write this out. I need to check to see what our IP address is. So we're gonna go ahead and step to the exact same file address of 10.0.2.15 and for the gateway it's going to be so now that we know our address our gateway we need to know what dns we would use so we can just do so with all that we have our dns we have our gateway and we have our address that we're going to use so just remember the dot 15 and then obviously our gateway uh, which is the dot two. So let's go ahead and change this to static. So we'll go to addresses and this is where we'll fill it in. So we'll go 10.0.2.15. And when you do your address, um, so let's go ahead and take the brackets out and we're gonna actually put the address and then the net mask. So the dash 24 is the equivalent of putting net mask 255.255.255.0 in the older method. So with this, we can move from address to gateway. And for the gateway, it was the 10.0.2.2. And then we only need name servers next. So that's our DNS. So name servers, colon. And for this, we're gonna just tab over and then we put addresses, colon backslash, and then we put our name. So we're gonna change this to 8.8.8. .8 .8. So from here, we have our static IP that we've changed. We set our gateway. 
and we have our name server. And we also have the net mask, but it's actually part of the addresses now. It's just the forward slash 24 that tells it it's net mask along with the static IP. So with that, let's go ahead and write that out. And then we're gonna go net plan generate. And it'll say invalid YAML because we messed up somewhere and changed something. So it says line 10, column zero, found a tab character that violates indentation. So I was using tab and not spacebar. So my bad, very common mistake. One I wanted to make so you don't have to have to decipher that error message. So let's go to line 10. One, two, so this one had a tab in there. So I'm just gonna check for tabs. I'm just deleting out, back, deleting out, and then tab, just using spacebar here, no tabs. Oh, see, there was a tab in Gateway. That's a big no-no. Name servers also had a tab. And addresses also had two tabs. So with that, let's go ahead, write this out, and quit. And we're going to go back and generate now. Error in network definition. Line 8, column 23, expected sequence. So from here, we probably need those brackets. So let's go ahead, go to line 8. And this is the sequence. So let's go ahead, put this in brackets. Put this in brackets too. Let's say we want multiple DNS servers, which you probably should. And we'll just do ones right here. And with that, we'll write this out. So let's generate now. Error, line eight, column 12, unknown key gateway. So gateway is incorrectly labeled. So let's go ahead and look at this. So this actually needs to be gateway four for IP version four, like DHCP four. So um, with this, let's go ahead, write it out and see what we get now. Ah, we did it generate correctly. So now we can actually apply our net plan. So net plan apply. And with this, let's ping www.google.com. So we're gonna do a little quick reboot here after doing the apply. I just wanna make sure it retains all these settings. So we're gonna go ahead, redo it, and see what the NetPlan YAML file looks like on reboot, and just kind of checking up on our IP configuration just to see what all it says. So first on reboot, let's check to make sure we have internet. So we'll ping Google. We have a clear response from them. So let's do an IPA. And we still have our .15 address, IP route. You'll see that we still have the 2.2 as our primary gateway. And NS lookup google.com. So let's go ahead and go back to NetPlan. LS. And let's go ahead and at the YAML file. Still all right there. So. So with this, I think we should break it and see what we get by changing the address and, and make sure that what we're doing is actually affecting our IP address. So we haven't really changed anything, just saying, hey, that's the DHCP that was assigned. We're just setting it to static. So now let's change that static from a dot .15 to say dot .14. So let's nano into it, change this from that to that. We're gonna write it out. It would help if you did it as sudo. Sudo. All right, let's go ahead. Come back here. Dot 14. Write this out. Then we do our net plan generate. Look for any errors. We didn't get any. Net plan apply. And then from here, let's see what our IP address is. And there you go. It has already changed to the dot 14, which is pretty awesome. So very fast, I wanted to go ahead and just kind of put this out there just so you understand how to do a basic static IP and kind of understand how NetPlan works. Remember, it's not replacing system D's DHCP, D or the net 
manager service. It's actually just interfacing with them. Think of this as a front end or a configuration uh, file. So learn this configuration, learn all the different setups and syntax. I'll put in the description down below uh, the website to go to so you can see all the different examples. If you wanna get into the more complex bonding and other things, you can easily do that. So well, there you have it. That's the basis of NetPlan. I really do like it. I really do like uh, the push for a lot, using a lot of these YAML files. I think they're very intuitive. And the fact that you could generate and see all those errors and kind of just work through them is far better than the old method of when something went awry, you were kind of having to do uh, tails on system logs to see exactly what was kind of spitting out, where the generate would just say, hey, right here, you have a syntax error, go here, fix it. And there really is not much guesswork to it. So uh, yes, it's different, but after tinkering around in here and learning it a little bit, I really enjoy NetPlan. It's not that bad of a system. And the fact it interfaces with System D and Network Manager, it doesn't replace them, but interfaces with them and says, hey, this is what you need to do. I think it's a good thing because we're not going to various locations to achieve different things. If we want to change the DNS, we want to change it from a static to a uh, dynamic, whatever it might be, we can do it all within this one YAML file, generate and apply that configuration. So that's awesome. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And a big thank you to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.